This is the RNAV 3.4 approach into Renton, Washington. It's a non-precision GPS approach, and we're going to stress many times that it's a non-precision approach. It only has LNAV encircling minimums, which are minimum descent altitudes, MDAs. There is no LPV minimum, which would have a decision altitude like on a precision approach. There are two schools of thought on flying non-precision approaches, and it depends on your personal preferences, airplane capabilities, and the airport and environmental conditions to determine which is best for you. The first is what's called a Continuous Descent Final Approach, or CDFA. You'll find this is common in the airlines and for many commercial operators. We'll fly that one first in our G1000 equipped Cessna. So for this approach, we have the advantage of being able to use a lot of automation. We have the autopilot arm to fly both the GPS course, as well as the advisory glide path that computes the continuous descent angle, which is listed on the plate as 3.75 degrees, a bit steeper than standard. When the glide path comes to center, the autopilot captures it, we configure for the approach, and start down. There's an added wrinkle to this approach where we have to make about a 20 degree turn to get onto the final approach course here. Now, this isn't a precision approach, so we're not flying a glide slope and ignoring all the other altitudes. There's an intermediate step-down fix at Warwick, which we need to cross at or above 1100. The advisory glide path doesn't guarantee we make that minimum. On hotter than standard days, it's possible we can be on the glide path but cross that fix below 1100. That's a bust. If that's the case, we may want to not have the autopilot fly the glide path and instead aim to be a bit above it on our descent. In any case, we need to be ready to level off at 1100 if needed, which we could do by pressing Alt as we get to that altitude. It looks like we're going to make it here though, so we continue tracking the glide path. The minimum for this approach is 840 feet. Again though, this is a non-precision approach, so that's an MDA. We typically treat MDAs with some margin of error, so it's good to plan to level off at around 900 feet instead. Compare that to a decision altitude where we'd go all the way to 840, then execute the mist. So at 900 feet, we press Alt to level off and start looking for the runway, increasing power to keep our speed up. Before long, we see the runway end identifier lights and then the two PAPI lights. The mist approach point is the runway threshold. The lights flicker in and out of view, so we hold off on continuing down until we're sure we've got visual. Once we do and we start down, we're high on the profile with two white lights. 91.175C1 governs our decision making on what to do here. We need to be continuously in a position from which a descent to a landing on the intended runway can be made at a normal rate using normal maneuvers. Can we come in high and still make a normal landing? It really depends on how much runway we have. We're going to be landing long obviously, but if the runway is long enough for our aircraft, that's okay. It's 4742 feet here, which we determine is more than enough for our Cessna. Now, for most commercial operators, this is a destabilized approach and would necessitate a missed approach. That's because the same reg for 121 and 135 carriers also requires a touchdown to occur within the touchdown zone. That usually means the pappies need to show you on the correct profile. There's no option to land long. So before shooting an approach like this, brief the runway length and if you're comfortable accepting the extra risk of allowing yourself to land long. Another way to shoot this non-precision approach is using what's affectionately called the dive and drive method. We're in the same 172 with just a Garmin 530 GPS. It is WAS enabled so we are able to get the same advisory glide path as before as shown by the LNAV plus V. So we're going to reference the glide path needle once again for when to start down from the intercept altitude, making our turn onto the final approach course as we do. But this time we're going to aim to arrive at the next step down altitude 1100 feet prior to reaching Warwick. To do this, we're going to stay below the glide path slightly so that we get to 1100, level off by adding power, and then continue down again once passing the fix. We'll make another steep descent and level off at 900 feet this time above the MDA as we search for the runway. It's a very destabilized way to fly the approach, diving and driving like this, but it does allow us to arrive at the MDA a bit early and give us time to look for the runway. We don't pick it up until much later than the last time. By the time we have the Pappy in sight, we're well high, but given our plane and the longer runway, we decide to continue. We can always go missed, as long as we execute it at the runway threshold and start a straight ahead climb. But it looks like this time at least it'll work out. 
How do you like to fly non-precision approaches? Let us know and check out our full training courses online at the link here or in the description today.